If I say the phrase public transportation, what are the first things that come to mind? It's probably buses, trains, trams, subways and maybe a few boats. Then there are the genius projects of blood emerald billionaire Elon Musk, like his vacuum sealed tic tac slinging machine. But come on, powering airplanes with the passengers' farts would yield a better result than what that man shits out. But only a few cities around the world have these, cable cars. Cable cars are a viable but niche method of transportation. There's a reason you only see them frequently at ski resorts or somewhere with loads of steep hills, with a few exceptions. In this video, we'll take a look at cable cars, where they are used, how they integrate into the public transport systems around the world, and more. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. A cable car is exactly what it says on the tin, a vehicle pulled by a cable. The movement of the cable is usually powered by a central power station, constantly pulling the cable forward along its route. All cable cars share these basic principles, but besides that, there are loads of types of cable cars, all serving different purposes. For example, ski resorts almost exclusively utilize vehicles like chairlifts, tow lifts and gondolas because of their unique ability to scale steep hills and mountains. Inside mountain ranges, we can see more types of cable cars, for example, reversible and circulating cable cars. Reversible cable cars stop at its stations and directly go back in the direction where they came from, whereas circulating ones never stop, constantly circulating around their route. Reversible cable cars are most commonly used to scale single tall mountains, like Lomnický štít in Slovakia, whereas circulating cable cars are the most common in ski resorts, because of their higher passenger capacity. Even though mountainous areas and ski resorts are the most common places for cable cars, they're not the only places you can see them. Some cities, especially those located in mountainous and hilly areas, use cable cars and similar technologies for transportation. In my opinion, these can be divided into two categories, regular mass transit and tourist-oriented transportation. An example of cable-pulled mass transit can be found in San Francisco. San Francisco, being infamous for its large, steep hills, utilizes cable-pulled trams to move people up and down those hills. These trams are moved by cables running in between their tracks, from which they temporarily detach after reaching a station. There are three cable tram lines in the city, mostly running around the city center. Although they are very popular with tourists, I'd personally say that they resemble mass transit enough to be put in the first category. On the other end of the spectrum, there are cable cars primarily meant for tourists, such as the London Cable Car, formerly known as the Emirates Airline. The London Cable Car line is one kilometer, or 0.6 miles long, running from Greenwich to the Royal Victoria Dock on the other side of the Thames River. According to Doppelmayr, the company who built the line, the capacity of the cable car is 2,500 passengers per hour per direction, so 5,000 per hour in total. This is similar to Elon Musk's glorified sewer pipe in Las Vegas, which apparently transports 4,400 passengers per hour in total compared to the London Cable Cars 5000. In my opinion, from a practical perspective, this cable car is completely unnecessary. The two areas are already connected by the Jubilee Underground Line and the Road Tunnel. If they wanted to build another direct connection between the two places, I think the best option would be another bridge, maybe a pedestrian and bike only one. This would connect the North Greenwich Underground Station with the DLR line on the other side of the river. However, I do concede that the view from the cable car, which goes up to 90 meters above the Thames, is probably great. Some cities use cable cars for mass transit in sections of their area. Some use them as tourist attractions, but one city built a proper cable car mass transit network. These are the cities of La Paz and El Alto in Bolivia. Because of their location in the Andes mountain range, these cities are one of the highest situated cities in the world, with an elevation of 3650 meters, or almost 12,000 feet above sea level. If we look at an elevation map of these cities, we can see that La Paz is situated way below El Alto, 
so getting between these two cities has always been difficult. The cities decided on an innovative solution to this unique problem, a full network of cable car lines. These lines function like regular mass transit lines, with transit-oriented development, transfer stations, basically a regular public transport system. The system features 11 lines, spread all over the two cities. In my opinion, this is a great, innovative, but ultimately really niche public transport solution, only made viable by the extreme elevation differences caused by the Andes Mountains. For cities situated on at least somewhat flat lands, trains, trams and subways will always offer higher passenger throughput and will offer way, way, way better value for the investments necessary to get them up and running. Apart from these, there are many more methods to scale steep hills quickly, such as this is the Petrine funicular. It connects the district of Uyes to the top of the Petrine hill in Prague, Czech Republic. The bottom of the hill is a popular recreation spot for locals and tourists alike, and the hillside is a great park. The top of the Petrine hill doesn't really have anything on it, except for a few tourist attractions like the Petrine lookout tower. This means that the funicular is mostly used by tourists. Funiculars are a different type of hill climbing vehicle from the previous ones. They are always attached to their cables, unlike the trams in San Francisco, and they run underground, unlike the London cable car and others. If you want to take a ride on the Petrine funicular, be prepared for a cramped ride and long wait times, since the line is almost always full. Hill climbing vehicles don't have to exclusively use cables. This is the Strba Strbska Pleso Rack Railway. As the name suggests, it's a special type of railway, connecting the town of Štrba to Štrbské pleso, a popular natural landmark in the Tatra National Park in Slovakia. Rack railways resemble regular railways, the only difference being a third, toothed rail, which provides the trains with additional traction needed to climb steep hills and mountains. Unlike with cable pole systems, the trains use their own power, usually generated by an electric motor powered by overhead wires or a third rail. In conclusion, cable cars, funiculars, rack railways and others are useful methods of transport in places with high elevation differences, mountainous areas, canyons and more. For places with at least relatively flat terrain, there are definitely better choices, but they absolutely have their place in the public transport systems of certain areas. Anyway, Thank you so much for watching to the end. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the bloopers. This has been Tramley and I'll see you next time. Bye. In this video, we'll take a look at cable cars, where they are used, how it... Ugh. Although they are very popular with tourists, I'd personally say that they're... Ugh. According to Doppelmayr, the company who built the line, the cap... <laughs> As the name suggests, it's a special type of railway connecting the town of Štrba to Štrbské pleso, a popular ra <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for watching to the end. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Please like the video and so <sighs>